Hi teachers! Do your students fall asleep when you show them a timeline slide or a history of events? Today I'll show you how to convert those boring timeline slides into fun interactive PowerPoint game that your students would love to play. This ensures that they engage with your presentation throughout, remember the information like you've cast a spell on them and you look like a genius in the process. Sounds interesting? Let's jump right in. I'm Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com. We share creative ideas to help working professionals create engaging PowerPoint presentations. I took this slide from SlideShare. It talks about the history of microbiology. Okay, stop yawning. To convert this timeline slide into a quiz, we need to understand the components involved. Here there are three components. One is the year of discovery. Second is some kind of discovery regarding microbiology. And third, the scientist who made the discovery. I can ask the student to choose a year, show the discovery and ask who made the discovery. Or I can show the scientist and ask what discovery he made. It'll be an interesting quiz, right? Let us see how to execute this in PowerPoint. For practical purposes, let us keep the timeline short with just two events. Once you understand the basic idea, you can extend this to any number of events you like. First, we need to create a dashboard from where the student can pick a year. Here I am on a new slide with a title written. I'm going to draw two circles which will serve as the buttons that will take the student to the corresponding year. The year is 1796. Let's fill the circle with a nice color. Then go to shape effects on the home tab, go to preset and use this preset called preset 4. Let us make a duplicate of this and change the year to create the second button which represents the second timeline event. Now we have the dashboard ready. If the student were to click on 1796, it should open to a new slide which has information about 1796. So let us create the slides for these two years. Let me insert a new slide with the shortcut Ctrl M and the first one is 1796 and let us have the size really large. Let me change the background, right click, go to format background and choose a different solid fill. Then change the font color to have sufficient contrast. Now we can use this space to show the information regarding the scientist and the discovery. For that let me create a nice design. For that let me zoom out a little bit. Then I am going to use the rectangular shape to cover the slide area end to end like this. And then I am going to use another shape which is a triangle and then draw a large triangle like so. I can then go to rotate and say flip vertical and increase the size of this if required. I can zoom out a little bit and increase the size like so. Now that looks really nice. Then let me first select the rectangle, hold the shift button down and then select the triangle and then go to shape format, merge shapes and say shape subtract. Now I'm going to give this a much darker color. So let us go to shape fill and use a much darker hue of the color that we chose earlier and make another copy by pressing Ctrl D and this time let us choose a lighter hue like this and then place it over here. Let us restore the slide size to normal. Here we need to have three placeholders. One is for the picture of the scientist. So let us go to basic shapes and pick up this frame shape. Hold the shift button down and draw a square like so and then adjust the width of the frame like this. Then let us have the name of the scientist written here inside a rectangle. So let me pick up the rectangular tool and let us have the name space here and then make another space for writing the type of discovery that is made. So this is going to be the space where the discovery is written. Let me fill the shape with this color and then let us have the frame of the same color. And for this, I am going to use a lighter hue like this. Now let us fill in the details. First, I am going to insert the picture of the scientist, Edward Jenner. Let me write the name of the scientist here. The discovery he made is first scientific smallpox vaccination. Now we have the details of 1796. We need to enter the details for 1867. So let us duplicate this slide and change this to 1867. Let us change the name of the scientist to Joseph Lister. Here I have the picture of Joseph Lister. Let me cut it, right click on this image and go to change picture and say from clipboard. 
Now the picture is replaced. What he did was practiced antiseptic surgery. So now we have two slides. One is 1796, the discovery and the scientist and the corresponding information for 1867. Now we need to go to the dashboard and connect these buttons to the corresponding slides. For that, let us select the first circle, right click, go to link and say place in this document and say 1796 and say OK. Now we have linked this to the corresponding slide. Then let us do the same thing for 1867, link, place in this document and then 1867. Now both these are linked. Now when I go to slideshow, click on 1796, it takes me to the corresponding slide. Now once I go to the specific slide, I need to find a way to go back to the dashboard, right? So we need to create a link for that. Let me hit escape button and then use a small shape. It could be a triangle like this and then I can rotate it like this and then place it over here. I'm going to press Ctrl K which is the shortcut for link. Then go to place in this document and go to the dashboard slide which says history of microbiology. Then say OK. Now if you want to change the color to something more pleasant you can do so. Now that looks good. If you want to add a preset you can do so as well. Now once we create this button we can always make a copy by pressing Ctrl C and then go to the next slide and press Ctrl V. So when we go to dashboard and click on 1867, we go to the corresponding slide and then by clicking on this button here, we come back to the dashboard. So far, so good. The next step is to actually create the quiz where we show a part of the information and then question about the other part. To do that, in the first slide, I'm going to reveal the information about the scientist and I'm going to ask about the discovery made. So I'm going to select this box here, go to animations and add a simple fade animation. Now go to animation pane and this animation happens only when I click on this frame. So this is a trigger based animation. To do that, let me select the animation event, go to trigger and say on click off and search for the frame shape. Here you can see frame. So let me click on that. Now we have set a trigger for the frame to show this information. That means when I go to slideshow, I can ask the student to talk about the discovery made by Edward Jenner. And then I can verify the information by clicking on the frame here and the answer is revealed. Now let us make a small variation to the next slide. Let us go to 1867. Here I'm going to keep the information about the discovery open but I'm going to hide the scientist and the name. So let us select this picture, hold the shift button down and select this box which has the name of the scientist and then say I'm going to have these things enter with a fade in animation and I'm going to have a trigger with the same frame. So let us go to trigger after selecting these two animation events and then go to on click off. Once again, I'm going to use the same frame. So when I go to slideshow, the discovery is shown here. I can ask the student to name the scientist who made the discovery. And then I can verify the answer by clicking on the frame where the photo and the name of the scientist is shown. So we have done the setup. But then there is one other thing I want to do. Once a button is clicked, I want the color of the button to change so that the next student cannot choose the same question. So how do we do that? So you can choose the circle, go to animations, under emphasis you can choose fill color and then say that this animation will be triggered only on the click of 1796. For that, let us once again go to trigger and say on click off and here you have two ovals. We don't know which one represents 1796 and which one represents 1867. So we need to name these two ovals. How do we do that? So let us select the first circle, then go to home and here we have the option called select under editing group. Click on that and open this one called as selection pane. Now you can see that the default name given to this oval is oval 24. Let us click on that and change the name to 1796. Now it is much easier for us to recognize this oval. Let us do the same for the second one. Let us select this. Let us call this 1867 and hit enter. Now I can add the trigger the way I want. So let me go to animations, go to animation pane. Here I have selected the animation event for this one. This animation event is triggered 
on click of 1796 beautiful i can do the same for this one as well i can select that specific animation event and say trigger on click of only this button which is 1867 done so now i can go to the dashboard click on the button ask the question verify the answer go back to dashboard and you can see we have the selection differentiated if you have done all the steps well this is how the final slide would look you can choose any year it takes you to the corresponding slide and you can ask the question verify the answer and then go back to the dashboard you can see that specific selection is now differentiated then you can pick another year ask the question reveal the answer and you have that selection differentiated now compare this to the original slide we started with this looks way better isn't it interactivity is pure fun you can use this technique to create an interactive agenda slide that your audience can't take their eyes off i've created a simple step by step video tutorial on how to create interactive agenda in powerpoint right here The slide looks beautiful and it already has more than 760,000 views. So go ahead and click on the link to watch the video. You will love the technique.